I'm doing great. How are you doing, Big J? I'm doing pretty darn good. We're uh, excited to have you uh, up here in Billings uh, Saturday for Magic City Blues. It's going to be awesome. Yeah, I can't wait. We uh, It's cool because uh, Magic City Blues, I'm born and raised here in Billings. I've been here my whole life. But uh, the Blues Fest has kind of been an older demographic for like older uh, blues fans. And it's kind of cool. They're kind of putting a little twist on it this year. And uh, you're a little more upbeat and uh, younger than what they usually have. And I think people are interested in that. That's awesome. It, what's cool is I heard, I was just talking to somebody earlier, too, about uh, about you. And they said, I don't know where they saw you, but they said, you totally steal the show. And that's what I'm hearing from everybody. What do you do on stage? Everybody seems to love you. Well, we just put our hearts into it. You know, our, our music is is about people coming together and having a great time and dancing and having fun. And, you know, our music has something for all ages. So it's always a party for everybody. So we're looking forward to it. That's awesome. That's cool. Did you expect, I mean, when you got into music, did you, what did you expect? Did you want to be like a, a billboard charting artist? Did you just want to be playing, you know, clubs? Like, what was your hope when you got into music? Well, when I first got into it, I just felt like, you know, I had something to say, and 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 you know, three chords was the best way to say it. <laughs> you know? Unfortunately, I haven't learned any more chords <laughs> from yeah. when I started. But um, uh, I just love to um, uh, to play music, and and when I first started, I, I thought, you know, if I can make as much money as a school teacher and be able to play everywhere and play whenever I wanted, that would be fine for me. And and um, we. You know, I toured around the country in a van and eventually in a tour bus. And then last year, after almost 20 years of making music, we finally had our first, like, top 20 hit. And it was really funny for us. One day I was in New York City, and I'm in a taxi, and this taxi driver was from Ghana. And he says, uh, you know, what kind of music do you play? And I said, you hear that song that just came on the radio after Miley Cyrus's part in the USA? I, I said, that's me. <laughs> he goes, <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. We love that song in Ghana. So, you know, when you make it in Ghana, you've, you've really made it. Exactly. Or when you get to follow Miley Cyrus. That's another good sign. Yeah. What was the, uh, is there, I was doing some research, and there's a interesting story behind you writing Say Hey, isn't it? Weren't you staying at Woody Harrelson's house or something? Yeah, I've been buddies with Woody for about 15 years, and he invited me to stay at his house while he was making Zombieland, and he was away, and he said, you know, you can just have the place to yourself, and and uh, really be creative. And so one day I was in a shower and I put a few chords down on my iPod. And uh, I, I started flowing, you know, I started getting these ideas for a song and I didn't have anywhere to write it down. So I started just uh, writing it in the steam on, on the, the window of the shower. And I get out of the shower and I'm feeling like, oh, this is great. And then I turn around and the steam is like slowly evaporating. So I grab my iPod, I take a picture and I'm like, oh, this is great. I got to figure it out. And I put it in my computer and it's inside out and backwards. And I couldn't, I couldn't read any of it. So I had a friend try to talk me through flipping it the right way, which was like trying to land a 747 for me. Yeah. And, uh, and then Woody calls me. He's like, Michael, what's going on? I how's the song I'm going. I said, Woody, I'm, you know, I'm in your bathroom sitting on your toilet. Can you call back later? He goes, no, I, I just want to know how's it going. I said, I think I wrote a song in your bathroom. And he goes, is it a number one or a number two? <laughs> That's very cool. Is it true, too, that you don't wear shoes except for when you, like, absolutely have to? Yeah, I haven't worn shoes in 10 years. And the way that it started was I was um, playing in a lot of developing nations where kids couldn't afford to wear shoes. And I'd play out on the street. And kids would follow me around, and so I'd take off my shoes to try to, you know, just kind of show that I was with them, you know. And they would all laugh at me because I couldn't even take three steps so my feet were so tender. So I decided that when I got back home to San Francisco, I was going to go for three days barefoot, and it turned into ten years. And um, this September, we're doing ten shows with this group called Souls for Souls, and they provide shoes for kids in America and all around the world who, um, who need shoes. And um, they're about to reach their 10 millionth pair of shoes that they've given away this September. So we're trying to raise uh, 500,000 pairs of shoes um, during this, those uh, 10 shows during that time period to coincide with their 10 millionth pair of of shoes that they're giving away. Is it awkward for people? Like when you're on, I mean, do you get a lot of weird looks or is it just pretty, do people take it normally? Yeah, sometimes you get weird looks. You know, we walked into a pretty fancy hotel lobby and, you know, the, the security and the 
door people are kind of looking at me like, <laughs> who's this guy walking in here barefoot? <laughs> and, um, but, you know, mostly people are really cool. Some people, some people come up and ask me about it. Um, but I always have a pair of flip-flops with me, so if I'm in a restaurant or someplace or at the airport that they ask me to put on shoes, I'm, I'm not uh, shy about just putting my cool. flip-flops on. That's cool. I mean, it's just cool that you kind of take these... Uh, it, everything seems so organic with, with you, and that's pretty awesome. What else is going on other than, uh, you know, the tour and uh, coming here for Magic City Blues? What else do you have work? Are you working on a new album? Yeah, we just we just uh, finished a new album, actually. We just shot a, a new video for the song, The Sound of Sunshine which is our latest single that's coming out. The video should be out in a couple of weeks. And um, the album comes out on September 21st. Now we're just out on the road, and we're playing lots of um, new songs from our album. Probably about half of our set is is new songs. And we, we recorded most of the record out on the road with John Mayer. We did about 50 shows with him in February and uh, through April. And um, you know, every night we'd play in these basketball arenas for... 15,000 people and most of them didn't know our music and so we'd play all these new songs and we'd see how the audience would respond and then maybe we'd see like ah oh, they're not really dancing this one so we'd go back in our dressing room set up our little studio and uh, speed the song up or change the beat and so this album was really influenced by uh, the fans that's cool. That's awesome. Well, uh, we can hopefully see some of that uh, inspired album. Uh, Saturday, Magic City Blues. Band start at 6 o'clock. Michael Franti and Spirit take the stage at 1030. I'll be up there uh, introducing you, so I'll get to uh, officially meet you then. But I know everybody's looking forward to it. It's been great talking to you, Michael. Uh, thanks for joining us, man. You too, Big J. Thanks a lot. And uh, we'll see you out there. The Big J Show. Weekday mornings from 6 till 10. On Billings' number one hit music station. Hot 101.9.